For today's video, we will be talking about Gilman reagent. The Gilman reagent rule formula for this will be R2, as in carbon, with copper and lithium, also known as organocopper lithium or lithium dialkyl cuprate. So in this case, if we have a structure like this, a double bond here with bromine, with our reagent here, the Gilman reagent, a methyl, right, parentheses, with two on the outside, and we have our Gilman reagent, right? All we do is put the methyl, we add the methyl, and remove the bromine. So literally all we do is redraw the structure, add the methyl, and remove the bromine. That's it. Let's do another example here. We have the structure with bromine, and let's add the methyl, okay? All we do is remove the bromine and add the methyl in here, so like this. That's all we do. Let's do another example. We have this ring connected with bromine, and we're adding uh, somewhat of a isopropyl in here, right? All we do now is remove the bromine and add that isopropyl in here, like that. Let's do another example here. We have this aromatic ring with an epoxide. And so let's add two carbons with a double bond in it, okay? And then let's use water and HCl. Okay, in this case, uh, we have that carbon, which is secondary, and the other carbon, which is primary. Attack the least amount of substituents, the carbon with the least amount of substituents, so the less hindered side, which would be on the right. So we have one, two, three, four. We had four carbons in total. Three and four is where the double bond is at, right? There's four, there's double bond right there at three and four. Also add the water, so OH, because the oxygen is negative charge. The HCl in this case, it doesn't do anything in this case. And here's our product. We'll do the mechanism later. Let's do the mechanism now. We have the structure, the bromine. And let's attack it with the CH3, okay? Now this is bonded with the co copper and lithium, right? So this bond goes with the carbon is attached with the bromine, goes, attacks it, and kicks off the bromine. And so we would have the methyl like that. That's it. So the CH3 and the CH3. It's a one-step mechanism. It can be. Let's do another example here. We have this ring connected with bromine. Let's attack it with this isopropyl thing. We have the copper and lithium here bonded together. That carbon is at. Attack the carbon where bromine's at. Kick off, kicks off bromine. And we have a final product that looks like this. Very simple. Let's do one last mechanism. We have this aromatic ring connected with an epoxide. Our reagents would be two carbons with double bond together, bonded together, and we have water and HCl in this case. So we see that the carbon on the left, the carbon on the left is a secondary carbon, while on the right is a primary carbon. We attack the carbon that has the least amount of substituents, so on the right side. Attacks it, kicks off the electrons to oxygen, now oxygen has a negative charge. Okay, when we draw this, we see that we have four carbons in total. Because we add two other carbons here, right? There's oxygen there on the first carbon because that's where it's, it is, right? One, two, three, four. So we add two more carbons, and for a total of four, three and four is where the double bond's at. So that's why I put the double bond there. Okay, now the water comes in to deprotonate that oxygen. And so this is where we have a final product of the structure with the OH at the end. The HCl does not do anything in this case. It is just there for it, uh, in the process of doing the mechanism of the product of the reaction and a byproduct of OH.